I started out this series of videos on Docker with the intention of illustrating to you how to make use of Docker for full stack web development. We are almost at the conclusion of this journey. In this video, I will sum up everything to illustrate to you how we will set up the entire full stack for development using Docker. So we'll look at the front end, the uh, Node.js or Express based server and the MongoDB database and how to set up the entire stack and start up the containers which run the support for the front end development, the Node.js or Express uh, server development and of course the MongoDB database running in its own container. To get started on this exercise, let's first go ahead and clone a Git repository where I have developed a very simple to-do application using React and the backend server using Express and the database using MongoDB. So to do that, add the prompt type git clone github.com jmopala to do docker.git. And once the folder is um, created, let's just move into the to do docker folder. And we'll see that here I have set up two subfolders here, to do client, which is the React client, and the to do server, which is the uh, Express based server, and of course the MongoDB uh, database behind the scenes. Now let's go ahead and start up this application, and then I will illustrate to you how I have set this up for full stack web development. So to do that, add the prompt type docker compose up minus t and you will see that this will launch three containers one each for the client side development and the server side development and the third one of course running the mongodb database if we open the docker dashboard you will notice that we now have three containers running under the to-do docker overall application. Going to your browser, let's type localhost 3000 and you will see my to-do application running in the browser here. This is, as, as I said, a very simple application, which is a to-do list here. The typical uh, applications that are used to illustrate a lot of um, interesting um, issues about various platforms. So here, my to-do application is implemented using React with React hooks. You will see the code in the to-do client folder there. My to-do server is, of course, implemented using Express, and the data itself is stored in a MongoDB behind the scenes. So let's see how this application works. So we can uh, click to um, mark my to-do list as completed. We can unclick back to let them rejoin. So we have at the top a list of uh, still pending tasks. Let me add a new task to this list. And you see that as I type in the tasks, they get added to the list. And then as I complete the tasks, I can ma mark them as completed. And then they'll be marked as completed. If I want to uh, mark them as incomplete, I can uh, reverse that process also. We can also delete tasks um, as you see here by just clicking on the delete uh, button at the end there you can delete tasks. So this is a typical to-do application uh, with some very basic features that I have implemented just to illustrate. Of course the intention of this video is not to show you how to develop a to-do application, but the intention of this video is to illustrate to you how you can carry out full stack web development with multiple Docker containers, each running the different layer of your stack. Now, if you are wondering how I set up this application, 
the to-do client itself, I first scaffolded out a React application using the Create React App script and then developed the to-do application completely using a Docker container. And then my server, I set up my Express server by using Express Generator to generate the basic scaffold for my server and then added in the various um, elements there in order to develop the server. And then of course, MongoDB database running in the background there. Now I am orchestrating all these three things together to start the entire application stack by using this Docker Compose file here. Now, this Docker Compose file should be quite familiar to you. We have seen bits and pieces of it already in the previous videos. Now, the client and the server itself, you will see that I have set up Docker files in the client application. Uh, the standard Docker file, you, will, you would have seen the same Docker file in my previous video when I illustrated the Node.js um, and Express-based application. Similarly, uh, in my server um, folder, you will see the Docker file again, which is exactly the same as what you have seen in the previous video when I uh, talked about local development. So nothing surprising about these two Docker files that I've set up in the client folder and the server folder. And then if you want to just run only an Express-based server, I have a Docker Compose in the to-do server folder, which can be used to start up just the server part of your application. So if you are only doing backend development, you can just use this Docker Compose file for starting up just the Node.js uh, and Express-based server and the MongoDB database behind the scenes. Now, if you want the uh, entire stack, including the front end, the um, Express server and the MongoDB database, then this Docker Compose file that is in the upper folder is the one that you use. Now, in this, you would see that I have set up three services one, the to-do client, the to-do server, and then the MongoDB database. Now, the MongoDB setup is exactly the same as the previous video. Nothing surprising here. The to-do server setup is exactly the same as the previous video, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about these two because you have seen this in the previous video. And then, of course, the volumes. We have the Mongo data and the node modules set up for the Mongo a database uh, and persisting the node modules folder of my server. Now the React node modules uh, volume is for the client side node modules to be persistent. Now let's look at the client side setup itself. So the client side setup itself is completely captured in this part of the Docker Compose file. So you can see that my uh, build context is set up as the to-do client here. Now, of course, the server side also, the build context is set up to be the to-do server uh, folder here. So that is something that you expect to be set up because the Docker Compose file is in the uh, parent folder of these two folders here. So that is very straightforward to understand. Now, uh, also, uh, this depends on the to-do server. So we expect the client uh, um, application to be started after the to-do server container is up and running. And the command to start up is yarn start. So I am using yarn to run. So if you are using the Node.js um, container, the Node.js container already contains yarn uh, in, installed there. So you can uh, use that directly to start that up. Now, an additional uh, change in the Server side is that I have set up the server to run on port number 3001. So I do that by setting up the port environment to 3001 and then exposing the port here. So my server is accessible at localhost colon 3001. The client itself runs on localhost uh, colon 3000. So that is something that you would see me set up here in the ports here. Now the volumes here, as you would expect, we have a bind mount of the to-do client folder into home node app 
um, you know, folder here and the react node modules itself mounted into home node app modules folder so my um, react client code will be in this uh, folder in the container home node app here now uh, in addition the react scripts that uh, react uses to um, to to run requires yarn start to be run in the foreground so to help me set that up i have set up these two um, here the tty to true and standard in open to true so this ensures that this particular container runs in an interactive mode so that if my uh, container starts up with yarn start it will continue to run there so if you don't include this then you will notice that my um, react client container will shut down after it does a yarn start so this is an important change that you will notice here in addition to ensure that my um, client will always uh, keep track of changes in the to do client folder any changes that i make to files in the to do client folder i'm setting up the chokidar use polling to true this is required because this is what uh, my react um, application uses to track changes to the files there and restart um, the the um, server that is serving up the react application here so that is another environment variable that i need to set up here with these changes again very straightforward for you to understand how this is set up because we have already reviewed this part the server side part uh, in the previous video. So the client side, the React client setup itself is very much similar to that, except for the different command that we are using here. And also these additional changes to the environment and the TTY that we set up here. That's about it. And once you start up, as you saw, once you start up using Docker Compose, then your client, your um, Express server, and the MongoDB will be up and running in three separate containers and communicating with each other as you would expect from before. Now, you can open um, the source code in a editor and then you can edit the client code and the server code in the editor. Here you can see me uh, having them open in uh, Visual Studio Code. I can go ahead and edit either the client code or the server code and then the uh, containers will automatically uh, ensure that the corresponding servers are restarted because on the server side i am using nodebond and on the client side we already have the setup with the, the uh, Re uh, react uh, scripts so that the server will restart whenever you make any changes to the source code here now if you are curious to know how the source code itself is set up you can browse the source code here you will see that i have my React client set up using Redux. If you want to learn more about Redux and how React is set up, you can take my um, React uh, course um, where I go into more details about it. The interesting thing here is that in this application, I have made use of um, the new features of uh, React, which is the use of hooks so you can see me using the uh, uh, react redux hooks here the use selector and the use dispatch here and then the use effect hook here for uh, fetching uh, the data from, from the server for my react application and so on so in case you are interested this application makes use of react hooks all the way through in my to-do list.js file and also in the add to do the JS file. A very simple application here that illustrates um, the use of Turo. Again, that is not the concentration of this particular series of videos. I wanted to illustrate the use of Docker, but in case you are interested, the entire application I developed using the three Docker containers. So the three Docker containers were running. I was editing the server side code. I was editing the client code, making sure all of them were running um, together with each other and this is the end result now if you want to further develop this application 
by all means, be my guest. You can uh, further tweak the application to your heart's content in order to understand how we can use this setup for doing full stack web development. Now you can make use of the same setup that I have done in the Docker Compose file for your own future applications. If you so choose to, you can scaffold out a server application using Express Generator. You can scaffold out a client application using React Client. If you are into Angular, you can scaffold out using the Angular CLI and then set up the application exactly like the way you have done in this video, the Docker Compose file and the Docker files in each one of these um, uh, folders. And then you have your entire environment set up to run whereby you can carry out full stack web development. So with this, I conclude this journey through the full stack web development um, series uh, using Docker. Now, in the next video, I will make some concluding remarks about this whole journey and then what you should be pursuing further after you complete this series of videos. By all means, this is not the end of your journey. This is just the starting point of your journey into the Docker world.